what's up guys and welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a fun one we are going to get into some color we are going to do a quick weave we're going to chit chat we're basically just going to have fun with this video um if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for tuning in to another one of my videos if you're new here welcome my name is janice and we are basically all about hair so i guess let's go ahead and jump into this video so um first things first i am coloring this hair right now so basically what i did with these bundles was i don't know if i would necessarily con i guess it's considered like an ombre color um but y'all know my natural hair is black so i have to the bundles come in a natural 1b um to two colors so i have to dye the top of the bundles black to make sure that it blends with my leave out blends with my natural hair so that is what i'm doing right now in this video i did not show you all the color that i used because i literally pulled two different colors out from under my cabinets i was just like whatever whatever i have is what i'm gonna use so i didn't really use anything special to color the bundles black but um yeah we gotta color the bundles to make sure it blends with my natural hair and I'm basically only coloring the top of the bundle so from like the wet until about maybe mid bundle I guess um, I was trying to estimate exactly where I wanted the color to or the black to stop and the color to begin um, so I'm just making sure I have I'm kind of thinking about how long my leave out is right and just kind of thinking about that in terms of where it would stop like mid bundle um, and that's what I used as my determination on where to stop with the black color. Um, and so again, as you can see, I'm just applying the black color. An important thing to note when coloring your bundles is you all, you always wanna make sure it's applying evenly. Um, and that's why you see me go in with the paddle brush just to kind of brush and smooth everything out, just to make sure every single strand is being colored. Tip number two is you also wanna make sure you flip the bundle over on the back because sometimes the color does not saturate well enough to the other side underneath. So. Also, guys, I just want to go ahead and put this out there. Um, I apologize for the quality of this part of the video. I filmed this part on my phone in my bathroom. Literally just hit record. Didn't pay attention to the lighting. Didn't didn't pay attention to whether or not it was in focus. So I apologize. Um, and then let me just go ahead and apologize for the rest of the video. So I'm trying to get out of the habit of filming or actually recording on my iPhone. So I tried recording this video on my Canon um, Rebel T8i, whatever the heck camera I have. But like... I'm still trying to figure out the camera settings and understand the lighting and get adjusted to it. And so I think I just had it on the wrong setting and like my lighting was horrible. Like it kept, the focus kept going in and out. It kept changing the color. And so I really tried to edit it to the best of my abilities. Um, but I didn't want to scrap this video because I really wanted y'all to see this. I really liked the results and how it came out. So Hopefully it's not noticeable. Hopefully y'all still appreciate and like the video, but just FYI, I wanna apologize in advance for the quality, the color, the focus, a few different things that I wish were better, but I think it's still a good video. So um, hopefully you guys will still enjoy the video. All right, so back to the color. So literally I have three bundles. Um, also these bundles are from My Hairline 1222 Hair Extensions. Uh, these are Brazilian straight. It's actually from our platinum collection. But as always, you know, I'll link everything in the description below. Uh, but I'm just doing the same thing for all three bundles. Um, literally just applying the color the black color from weft to about the midpoint of the bundles and um after i'm done i'm just gonna let it sit for about i think i let it sit for maybe about 20 25 minutes um and if you notice i have the bundle sitting on foil and sometimes people will like fold the foil so that way it processes a little bit faster the foil helps to um kind of keep the heat inside of the bundles and heat makes the bundles process a little bit faster but I did not want to foil the or fold sorry <laughs> I didn't want to fold the bundles because I didn't want the black color to accidentally get on the part of the bundle that I'm gonna color so I just let them process as is um and it, it did a fairly fairly decent job so that's really all that's to the step apply the black color 
um, about where you want it to stop. Make sure it's applying evenly. Make sure you're brushing the bundle out as you're going. Let it sit for about 20, 25, 30 minutes. Rinse it out and then we're going to move on to our next step. All right, so after you apply the black color, wash it out thoroughly, it's time to go in and color the ends of the bundles. I forgot to show you which bleach I used, but I used the Clairol BW2 bleach, um, and this is a 30 volume developer. And I like my formula, the bleach and the developer to be a bit creamy. So um, I don't know if it, if it really matters. Well, you actually, you do want to make sure you have enough developer so that your color process is the correct way. Um, and so this right here is pretty much the consistency that I like for my bleach. And then it's kind of the same process as the black color. You just want to go in and really saturate the hair. Now, I will say with the bleach, you have to make sure your bundles are saturated. Otherwise, your color will not pull up evenly. So yeah, that is really important when bleaching your bundles. Please make sure you are evenly applying the bleach. Make sure after you apply, you go through with your brush, your comb, your whatever, and make sure all the bundles are laying flat, laying smooth, so that the bleach can literally hit every single strand. That's super, super important because you do not want your color to come out splotchy and uneven and just not good sis so make sure you go through and brush it out after applying the bleach um another thing that i want to mention is when you're doing this type of color i guess the ombre um will say it is you don't want to really go through with like like the bottom of it is okay to go through with like paint brush strokes but as you get to the top that's gonna like blend into the black color you want to like maybe like i don't even know how to describe this but like kind of i guess maybe do it in more like strokes like you get what i'm saying you can see what i'm doing right here like i don't really want it to be a harsh line in between the black and the color like i want it to have more of like a a biolage or however you pronounce that effect like you know you don't really want a harsh line um and then y'all can see that bleach did not get to the back side so please make sure you flip your bundle over to make sure the bleach is also being applied on the back of the bundle as well and then as far as how long you need to let the bleach sit, um, I feel like it's more of just like an eyeing process. Like let it sit for a couple of minutes, come back, take a look at the color because one thing about color is whenever you bleach your hair or even just like a box color, it's always gonna be a little bit lighter once it's dry. So if you come in 10, 15 minutes later and it's pretty much the color that you want it to be, you probably wanna go ahead and wash it off because it's gonna be lighter once it dries. Trust me on that. Um, oh, I wanna say this too because I forgot to mention this after I did the black color. You don't really wanna bleach wet hair. So what I did was I took the blow dryer and just made sure the part that I was gonna bleach was it doesn't have to be completely dry, but you also don't want it to be soaking wet. So just wanted to mention that. Last thing I wanna mention is um, when you bleach or color your hair, especially your natural hair, you wanna make sure you your first shampoo is with a neutralizing shampoo. Um, I'll insert a picture in a second of what that looks like and also link it below. 
but you always want to use a neutralizing shampoo because it, it restores the pH balance and makes sure that your hair is no longer processing that color. So um, I wanted to treat my bundles the same way as I would my natural hair. So my first shampoo reaching or washing, sorry, washing this bleach out was with a neutralizing shampoo. And then I went in with my normal shampoo and conditioner following that. All right guys, so last step in this coloring process is to go in with a toner. Now, I'm going in with a toner because a lot of times when you bleach hair, whether it's natural hair, extensions, or whatever, it'll it'll pull up and have like red tones to it. And I personally don't like red tones. And so basically what I'm trying to do is cancel out those red tones to get more of like a golden toned brown if that makes sense. Now, if you like the red tones that it pulls up to from the bleach, you do not have to do this step. But this basically cancels out those brassy red undertones and just gives it more of a nice golden brown tone. Um, so yeah, uh, after we do this part, we're just gonna apply it to all three bundles, same thing, saturate the hair, make sure it's even. Doesn't really matter if you get a little bit on the black color because it's not really gonna color it too much. It's just gonna kinda cancel out that red um, if that makes sense so after we apply our toner and uh, make sure it's nice and saturated we're basically done with the coloring process and ready to move on now here's the part that I did not show um, after I was done toning the hair I decided that it was I wanted to be a little bit more adventurous and go slightly lighter so I actually went in and bleached the hair one more time um, the hair pulled up perfectly. Um, it wasn't really red when I bleached it again, I guess because I had already done the toner. So after I bleached it for the second time, I didn't have to go in with that toner again. After the second bleach, we were good to go and I was done with the color. But um, yeah, I mean the second bleach didn't really affect the quality of the hair. You'll see later on in the video, the hair still looks really good, really shiny, really healthy. Um, full of body and yeah, so I just wanted to mention that uh, just to be completely transparent I did go in, go in and bleach the hair one more time All right, so now we are moving on to the actual style. We've got our bundles colored. They're ready to go. They're dry. Y'all will see how the color came out towards the end of this video or as I'm installing the tracks. But uh, yeah, now it's time to get on to the style. Not gonna talk through this too much because y'all have seen my countless, countless, countless quick weave videos. Um, if you are a returning subscriber or you've seen my videos before, you pretty much should know how this process goes at this point. But 
um, I may jump in through important parts just to kind of give you guys reminders about what's really important um, and important steps while doing this process. Now look, I don't want to hear nothing in the comments about my edges are broken off and damaged. I already know. If you watched my last natural hair video, I told y'all I fried my hair from trying to dye it red. And so I already know I ain't got no edges right now, so don't remind me. But um, yeah, I'm trying to, to grow them back and get them back healthy. So uh, don't point that out, please. Thanks.
Um, as I've mentioned in my previous quick weave videos, this part right here is the most important step. This protects your hair from the glue. It does not allow the glue to touch your natural hair. Um, so you have to make sure this is completely dry before moving on. So grab you a snack sis because if you're using a handheld dryer, it's going to take a while for it to dry. I'm going to just be 100 straight up with y'all. So um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we're just moving on to applying our caps. We're going to use two wig caps and then we're going to go back through with that bond protectant one more time on top of the caps just to make sure we have an extra layer of protection because we do want to make sure our natural hair is as healthy and protected as possible. All right guys, so now we are moving on to the fun part. Um, I actually literally hate doing everything that I just did because I feel like it takes forever. But this part right here I really like because this is when you can kind of, you know, see the style start to come together. So, um, all right, so today's style is gonna be a little bit different. Um, we are going to spice things up a bit. I have some bundles from my hairline. This is actually our Platinum Brazilian Collection. I think the color came out a little bit lighter than I really intended it to. So I'm kind of nervous um, because, like I've experimented with color before, but I think this is a little bit different of a color than I'm used to doing. So I don't know how this is gonna come out. It looks red on camera, but I guess in person it has like, it has like goldish tones to it, but when I pull it back, it looks a little red. I'm not really a fan of like brown reds, but like in person, it looks a little bit more gold than it does on camera. So anyways, um, and that is how it came out and I'm actually really nervous. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure my camera's in focus. Um, but I'm actually really nervous because like I said, I don't think I've ever done a color similar to this um and y'all saw like the process of the color in the beginning of the video but yeah so accidentally like they all kind of came out some different shades like one bundle is a little bit darker than the other and then the next one is like a little bit lighter than the darker bundle and then the last one is like the lightest bundle so i think i'm gonna lay them like that so that it kind of gives like a highlight effect i guess um but yeah, I'm, I'm like low-key excited but scared at the same time. Like, I just hope it comes out well and I hope I don't look crazy, you know? Like, I really had a vision for this, so I just, I hope it comes out that way. I don't think I'm really gonna talk y'all through this. I mean, y'all pretty much know how this goes. I measure the track from end to end before I cut it to figure out exactly where I want it to lay and then I take my scissors and cut the track and that's it. <laughs> um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before in my previous videos but like when I'm gluing the track um, I like to seal the webs just to make sure like I get as minimal shedding as possible and the way that I do that is like, I don't even buy, like, a weft sealer because I feel like that's an unnecessary step. I literally just take my glue and, like, as I'm, like, laying the glue on the track, I just glue the ends right here, if that makes sense.
giving like and I'm kind of sad because y'all really can't see the color for real on camera. It's actually really pretty. But this is giving like Aaliyah MTV music video awards. Y'all know that photo of Aaliyah that I'm talking about when she had on that black dress and she had like the straight hair but her ends were like ombre, like a brown. That is exactly what this is reminding me of. Okay, so I had to um, film me pressing this out, out off camera because my battery died or my camera died. Um, but literally, as I was pressing my hair out, y'all, I think that I have... So I was saying before that... Um, Originally, as I was doing this style, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just do like a, a long bob. But literally, after I put it in and saw the color, if I do the bob, I'm gonna cut majority of the color off and I legit don't wanna do that. Like, this color is so pretty. I'm gonna show y'all when I'm done. Um, But I think I've decided to just keep it the length that it is. And I'll probably just like throw some wand curls in it or something. Why am I looking yellow? I originally y'all wanted to do like a little chit chat for this video, but like it's legit so hard trying to like talk as I do this. Like I'm so focused. Um, I'm so focused. Yeah, but anyways, okay, maybe we can get our chit chat in real quick now. So, um, one thing that's kind of been on my mind and. Like, I really want to open up the comments for us to be able to, the comments on this video for us to be able to talk about it. But, like, it's kind of sad. Like, it's like social media plays, like, a blessing and a curse in our lives with our generation, right? Like, we have the opportunity that no other generation has ever had to make so much money off of social media. Like, easy money. Well, not necessarily easy money, but, like... You know, it's just a different form of labor than the traditional job. Um, but at the same time, I say that it's a curse because I feel like it's very easy to let it go to your head or to let it make you feel like you aren't doing enough or adequate enough or like you don't have this, you don't look like that. And... Like, even for me, there were definitely points of times where I felt like that scrolling on social media. Like, I'd say more recently, maybe like last year, year and a half ago, like, as I was kind of struggling with my weight and trying to lose weight, like, I would see people on social media that looked this way and that way, and I would feel down about myself, and it's like, why don't I look like that? But I really had to learn that nine times out of ten majority of things that we see and i really hope my camera isn't dark but nine times out of ten majority of the things that we see on social media aren't real like i know myself included like so many people that edit their videos like i mean like all like take out a pimple and like soften up my skin but like people really do edit their videos to the point where they like edit their bodies you know what i'm saying and it's like here we are sitting here comparing ourselves to something that isn't even real and it's like not only that like i feel like our generation also like feels like we have to one up the next person and it's like i don't know like i feel like our our generation because of social media is just becoming like extremely materialistic you know what i'm saying and it's just like literally the second we do something the second we buy something i'm also guilty of this so i'm not like excluding myself from this conversation but it just seems like the second that we buy something of luxury or like you know we do this or that like we have to post it and it's like why 
why? <laughs> like, I really want, like, even myself, like, I want to ask myself why. And I don't know if it's just at this point, like, it's so, like, social media is so embedded in our everyday lives, in our brains, that, like, we just naturally do that. But I think it's sad to a certain extent. Um, it's sad because it creates false narratives. There are some people, you know, that really do believe that social media is real life and therefore it causes them to maybe go into a depression or think that they need to be doing this or have this because that's what they see and it's just like y'all i think the moment that social media kind of changed my perspective or the moment that my perspective changed on social media was once i realized Social media is really just to promote the good in life. Like, it's really for you to just post. Even though I feel like nowadays the people are doing better with, like, you know, showing bad as well as good. But that's kind of the original intent of social media, especially Instagram. Post your best moments. Post your best fits. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like... Once you really understand that concept, like what you see on social media is literally that person posting at their best. I don't know, like I just feel like you get really like a better understanding of, okay, this is not really real life for real. Like this is not really what's going on in that person's life on a daily. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, like I just, I really want a, why is my hair in my face like this? I really want us as a generation to kind of do better with like our perception of social media and the way that we value it. Um, and it's like obviously like with my business and being a micro influencer, I guess you could say like social media is an important aspect to my life but like I don't know I've just kind of learned to change the way that I look at it like for me it's just like a snippet in time a snippet into somebody's life it's not their real life 24 7 and that just is what it is like it really is what it is and it's so sad because I don't know if y'all have seen Y'all know that documentary on Netflix called, I think it's called The Social Experiment, where it talks about like the younger generation. Like I have a little brother, right? And it's like, I feel like on one hand, social media and technology is making the younger generation a lot smarter than us. But then on the other hand, it's sad because that's all they know. <laughs> like, could you imagine growing up as a kid and literally from the time that you knew what a phone was and how to work a phone, social media existed that has to be the most stressful thing ever like i cannot imagine um and it's like i say this now i don't know what it's going to be like when i get you know when i'm when i get to the point of having kids or whatever but literally like my children are not going to be on social media like that like i'm not going to allow them to be on a phone or a tablet or because i i really do think that takes away from like the joy of being a kid like no kid should literally be on social media why for what for what go outside go play go sit on a little big green like electrical box like we used to do when we were kids you know but i don't know and y'all this hair is still super shiny look at this I bleached this twice and put a toner on top of it and it still looks like this. Tell me where you find that at. Nowhere. <laughs> Alright guys, so here is the finished look. I am absolutely in love with it. And I'm kind of pissed because my lighting in here is not right. And I feel like y'all can't really see like the color for real, for real. Like, I'm about to get so upset. Like, somebody needs to help me with my lighting ASAP. Like, this color is gorgeous. 
Okay, so I had to switch over from filming on my Canon camera back to my iPhone because I felt like the iPhone gave you a better idea of what that color actually looks like in person. Um, and I really wanted y'all to see that. So this is more accurate of what the color actually looks like. So here is the finished product. I am really happy with the result. It came out really well. I love it. And um, yeah, I apologize for not curling my hair on camera. There was literally just a lot going on. I got hot. Um, my lighting wasn't right. I was just getting a little irritated, you know. And so I just said, I forget it. I'm going to curl it off camera. But if you want to know how I achieve these curls, my last video you can take a look at. Um, I showed you how to achieve these waves using a wand curler. Low-key feel like this video was all over the place, but hopefully it still turns out okay. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts about my new style and color. And I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.